Yeah, I'm trying. I don't. I don't do comments. I hate comments because they distract me. I'm just trying to talk. So if, if you comment, I apologize. I'm not trying to be. Um, oh my goodness, he locked his turn tab. But okay, I unlocked it. I'm not trying to be like a butthole, but just kind of like trying to focus. So it's about 3:30 in the morning, and I can't sleep. I've been up since two. Uh, just interceding and warm for my brothers in the spirit. I try to look presentable at 3:30 in the morning. Yeah, right. So, um, so yeah, just been up more and just praying for brothers. Um, asking God, what do you want me to talk about? You know, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to pray? And I, I'm at peace with what I pray for, pray, cried out, um, on my heart. And we're gonna get it. Uh, what I want to talk about is being still and the application of being still. Now, listen, people want to say, What's Merle? <clears throat> Merle's a follower of Christ, titles don't make no difference. You know, I'm not knocking the brothers and sisters that carry their title and say, you know, apostle, pastor. Listen, I'm a follower of Christ. Now, if Christ lead me to the pulpit, that's where he lead me to. If Christ lead me to the streets, that's where he lead me to. If he lead me, and right now he's led me into the children's ministry um, and to uh, volunteering with the ODA kids. It's like 30, uh, 12, 13 year olds, you know what I'm saying? They all need a positive, faith-filled male role model. Um, he's he's led me around kids. He led me led me to kids. He's led me to um a lot of husbands. He's led me to um family. Family is your first ministry. Um, um he's led to me family, friends, a lot of kids. I know uh, I've been raising kids since I was like nine or ten years old. You know, aunties, my little cousins. So. One of the reasons, one of the ways God kept me out of trouble, we're going to get to this be still, the application, but one of the ways God kept, I'm on fire, and it's like, since 2 in the morning, God, but God, okay, well, one of the reasons, um, one of the reasons I was able to stay out of trouble when I was younger is because God kept me, he made me responsible, I always had a heart for, for, for um, like, just keeping kids safe and making sure that they weren't around, um, uh, you know, just bad adults, uh, when I was younger, Myself, I was also uh, touched. I was touched by two men and a woman, okay? So when I see a kid, you know, I be um, very conscientious of who they're around and why they're around them. You know, um, just trying to make sure that they're good, that they're okay. So if I ever, like, if I'm out at, like, a Walmart or uh, a Target or just out and about, and if I see a kid... Um, uh, sometimes even like a, 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 a smaller teenager, sometimes you just don't know their age by their stature. Um, I'm try to not leave them until I know that they're good, until I know that they're okay. You know what I mean? Because you just never know. And that's just something that's, that's on my heart to do. And I don't, um, that's just something that's on my heart to do. So God has left, he's used that, that, that heart I have for protecting kids and teaching kids to, um, to minister to teach i'm a big kid at heart if you ever come to my church new community bible fellowship every um uh wednesday to start back after christmas break but during christmas if you come there on a um sunday either the 9 a.m 11 a.m or 1 p.m service i usually serve in the 1 p.m service and i get my word at 11 a.m if you come to my classroom on 28 you'll 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 hear my classroom like you'll literally hear my classroom like you know we just party and kick it you know we teach the word and i always make time at the end of class to party and just kid let kids have fun and let the word that i taught them resonate you know we uh we we party for like the first 15 minutes then we clean up we get into our word now uh, we get into a little movie get into some application and then we get back to partying um like worship word worship word oh i'm sorry prayer worship word and back to worship okay back you got to teach uh kids to praise you know what i mean because that's how you get through that pain you pray and you praise through that pain as soon as you get through praying they say pray and don't worry Ooh, that's an application right there so when they say pray and don't worry oh hey there we go thank you jesus so when they say pray and don't worry uh what they mean is um what they mean is as soon as you get through praying, as soon as you get through praying, um, put on some worship music. Start clapping. Start really getting, giving it up to the Lord. Start thanking Him. And if you don't know what to thank Him for, thank Him for everything 
that you have in your vicinity. Thank him for hear that snoring little girl in the background, you know what I mean? That's my baby girl. Thank you for that. You know what I mean? I got a fan going because it's hot in the house and other people cold and I'm hot because I got all this meat because I'm a polar bear. So I got the fan going. Thank him for that fan. Thank him for these five, ten digits, them ten toes. Thank him for seeing. Some people can't see. Some people ain't got hands to grab stuff. Thank him for your mouth, for your nose, for your ears. Thank him for everything that you can possibly think of. Thank him and just keep clapping and keep giving it up and close your eyes and just really work yourself up. And then you'll just start to thank him for more. You'll start to thank him for the for the past lover that left you because of that pain that they was giving you and now you see why God took them away and you'll start thanking them for that uh, you'll start thanking them for, for I mean just just you just go in the Holy Spirit will just take you over and you'll just go and you'll just go and you just you'll just go in and um you just let the Holy Spirit use you and you just thank him after you get through praying the application of praying don't worry I forget the Bible verse I'll look it up the application for praying don't worry it's after you get through praying you start praising you start telling the Lord how good he is to you when you pray there's actually a strategy for prayer there it is it's called can you see that I don't, it looked backwards to me okay the battle plan prayer book this is an awesome book it came from the war room movie but this is an awesome a battle you need to learn how to pray you need to learn how to go to war when you learn how to go to war and you in the army they see the boot camp right okay well how god did me in my first four months after i got saved it was just me and him in the word i went to church but i didn't fall in love with my church I fell in love with Jesus because I studied him. I stayed in that word. I fell in love with not the word because you can't get seduced by doctors. There's people that'll be reading the word and they'll just want to be debative and just debunk the word or they want to proof the word. It'll be all about the word, but why are they trying to debunk the word or proof the word or reproof the word? There's people out there going to hell because you're not working your harvest. You're not using the wisdom that God gave you to go and work that harvest. Stop debating. Stop arguing. Edification is one thing. What edification is is when two believers get together for the betterment of the wisdom to sharpen each other. Iron sharpens iron. Mm, that's the application. So listen to me. 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 I'm trying to get comfortable. I'm big and my seat little. Don't worry about that. Iron sharpens iron. For my believing brothers, iron sharpens iron. Listen to me. When iron sharpens iron, bruh, it's not going to always be sweet between you and your brothers. It's not. Listen to me. When iron sharpens iron, what happens? Think about this, brother. Think about this. When iron sharpens iron, two metal instruments come up against each other. And they get the rubbing and clinging and sparks start flying. And what happens? Them, them, that, them iron, them instruments, they get to set each other on fire. Whew. And look, y'all may buck heads. But y'all are doing this for the edification and the glory of God. So if y'all, if if if, if y'all, if iron sharp is iron, y'all butting, y'all rubbing up against each other, and sparks is flying, and y'all butting heads, but y'all sticking with it, don't hang up. To bro, you know I got out my hook up, my bad. Listen, my brother really will. I done told his brother, look, man, we didn't got into such many so some heated debates. I was like, look, man. Where you at, man? We about to wrestle. We ain't gonna punch each other because we love each other. And this this here is gonna glorify God. What you at? Cause we about to wrestle. You got me in my feelings, feelings. I'm being a hundred with you. Iron shoppers are. Okay? That's the application for iron shoppers are. That's what's gonna happen. But we talking about applications for my pastors, my ministers, my um my people in ministry. Application. Application. A lot of brothers here be still. A lot of brothers here follow God. A lot of brothers here focus on Christ. Brothers and sisters, I'm sorry, sisters, I'm not trying to negate y'all. We hear these things, but we don't know how to apply them. I've been saved for two years. So all I've been working on is application because people have been telling me to do these things. They tell me the word, but they don't tell me the application. I know people can say, uh, we're well, going study to find ourselves approved. So what the H is the teacher for? I'll wait. Okay. Okay. Because when you go to school, what happens when you go to school? The teacher teaches you, right? She teaches you math, and then she teaches you how to apply it. 
All glory to God. I don't speak for myself. I speak for my father who speaks through me. I pray before I do this live rap, get in there and make a song. I want the Holy Spirit to use me. You know, Merle think you know it all. No, God knows it all. I'm just a willing vessel for him to use to come to you and tell you, like, listen, application, my new believers, y'all reading the word, and y'all like, how do I apply this? It's called application. How do you be still and wait on the Lord? How much time? I don't even know. You show me how much time. Oops. You saw my chords. Yeah, it's crazy, but whatever. Um, so application of being still. So being still does not physically mean to be still. Okay? Being still does not physically mean to be still. It doesn't mean that. Being still uh, means it's an act of stillness. It's not just uh, being still per se. Being still is an act of stillness. And what I mean by an act of stillness is... I have the application, but I'm trying to think of an example. Um, um, being still. Okay, so basically, being still would be. Mm, that's good. Thank you, Jesus. If you're in a hospital, and of course you would have to be still in this situation, but if you're in a hospital, and you're on a surgical table and you're getting surgery done on you. Do the cuts from the scalpel hurt? Hopefully your anesthesia is working really well at this point. So you don't feel anything. But if you were to be awake. Mm, it's something there but I don't have it. It's something there that's meaning mm, that's good. You sleep and wake. Those cuts, they, they're significantly different when you sleep than when you're awake. There's something there. I, I I don't got it to give to you, but it's something there. But when you're in a hospital and you're getting worked on, you have to be still. You have to lay there and let them work on you. Because if you come off of the table and God isn't done working on you, you're going to be incomplete. And you're going to go out there looking for love incomplete. And you're going to have incomplete love. And incomplete love hurts people. Hurt people hurt people. You know, you might be able to cook. You might have a great job. You might have big, big muscles. You might be able to make love. But if you're not protecting her purity, if you're giving him husband benefits before the marriage, um, you may see some ungodly, unclean things about this person. And then you want them out of your life. But now, because you have had, you have soul ties, you've given him husband benefits, you've given him, you've given her wife benefits, you now, it's hard to cut them ties. It's hard to cut them ties because you got off that hospital table and didn't let God finish what he started in you before you went out there looking or looking to be found. You have to be still on that table, on that surgery, and let God finish working on you. Those cuts hurt. Those heart checks hurt. Dealing with that pride, that anger, that lust. Dealing with being a liar. Dealing with, dealing with coming to yourself in all aspects. Filling those God holes with God. Notice I said God holes. What I mean by God holes is, is, is things in people like um, when people have uh, had lost things, loved ones, husbands, wives, and then they go to feel these these voids of depression, anger, loneliness. Instead of filling those voids, those holes with God, they fill those voids with people, sex. Drugs, spending, they call it retail therapy. They uh, fill those voids with anything but God. And those are called God holes because God is made to fill those holes. Okay. And, um, yeah. Yeah. You know, you gotta let God fill those holes. Um, God makes you complete. You don't want to be complete in man because that's idolatry. When, when anything but God completes you, that's who you will worship. So if, if you're a woman and you find a man and you're hurting from a past relationship and this man swoops in and he just carters you off with gifts and flying here, flying there and love, making sweet love to you and then he hurts you. 
and you can't walk away from him. But he he hurt you. He cheated on you. Oh, Betty, yeah. He said, "Look, I'm I'm not I'm not um you know I'm not in a in an exclusive thing. But I want to love you. I want to be there for you. And you're special to me. You're special. But there's some other young ladies in the picture. They're not as special as you. At least that's what he's telling you. But he's telling them they're special too. Don't don't be fooled, sis. It's a game. This is chess, not checkers. And if you don't know how to play chess, get off." the game because you're going to lose and you're going to get hurt bad okay so being still hopefully that was a great example for you or at least a good example my knowledge just can suck sometimes but um the application of being still so it's not an actual stillness per se what i'm saying to be still being still is very much studying your word studying jesus mm, that's so good i can go so much into that but it's really studying jesus studying his characteristics there are materials out there and there are books and there are videos that just talk about the red letter and the red letter in the bible is when jesus talks okay there are even some books out there that have red letter in the old testament which is when god's talking but for those who don't know jesus is god for those who do know Jesus is God and for those who are not sure for those who are not sure Jesus is God he's all God and all man at the same time came in the flesh all God all man at the same time but Jesus is God look at first John when you first read first John oh man should I read it why not it's, it's what it's man it's four o'clock in the morning ain't nobody up if you watching and rewatch but ain't nobody up this late this morning up talking to the Lord. And I said, I wanted to go live because this application thing is really real, really real. You hear me? So we're going to go to first John. Just, and I'm not, I'm not trying to convince you Jesus is God, but what I want to do, I want to show you that Jesus is God. <clears throat> and then once I've read this, I want you to pray on it. I want you to pray for clarity. I want you to pray that God brings that thing full circle. And what he'll do is he'll use others. He'll use sermons. He might use a spiritual encounter. What I mean by a spiritual encounter, it could be a believer or an unbeliever. God can use anything. In the Bible, he used a donkey. Hee-haw! A donkey to get his word through. But that's God. Is he? Hmm. We are natural. God is super. When you combine our obedience with God's guidance, you have supernatural. God is super. We're natural. Do what he'd say. Supernatural. Hence the prophets of old, Moses, etc. So, first John. First John, not first John, second John, third John, the book and the gospel John. <clears throat> Jesus is God. The identity, the identity I I got a Cleveland public education. But remember, Peter was an uneducated man. God used him. He don't call to qualify, he qualified to call. So if I don't know how to talk, <clears throat> don't worry about it. Listen, in the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And the word was with God. He was in the beginning with God. Who do you think they're talking about? He is. He, Jesus, he was in the beginning with God. It says, He. I'm sorry. Eyes on okay. He, John chapter 1, verse 2. He was in the beginning with God. It's right there. He was in, right there. See that, John? Look that up. Okay. He was in the beginning with God. Okay. And you say, okay, if he was in the beginning with God, that don't make him God. Keep reading. All things came into being through him. Okay. So everything was made through Jesus Christ, okay? And apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. Everything was made through Jesus. So if everything was made through Jesus, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, okay? But... No, just keep on coming down. It says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. 
It's just more proof that Jesus is God. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. We can get into that, but that's a whole nother life, okay? The light shines in the darkness. You know people that, listen, we ain't got to be in a word right now. We can just step out and chew, bam. You know every time, you know the family members, you know they, they messing up. And they know they messing up. And you tell them the right thing to do. The light shines. In the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. You can tell some people the right thing to do when they hit and they hit up against the wall, turn and turn and turn again. But are they going to do what they're supposed to do? No, because the word of God never comes back void. He keeps every single one of his promises. And I don't care what people say, the word of God does not contradict itself. The reason why these people are hard-headed is as much as we love them, as much as we hold them and hug them and pray for them. Like, man, you've been shot three times, baby. Get out them streets. Baby girl, you got five babies and five baby daddies. Cut it out. Be still. Let God send you a husband that's going to take care of you and the five babies, and he'll do it. It is me. Listen, let God tell me my wife got five children. Five is a number of God grace, and I'm not pumping no type of gas, trying to, trying to play into emotion. If God said, Murrah, I want you to take care of her and them five kids, and I got two, that makes seven. Five is a number of God's grace. Seven is a number of God completion. Me and my wife, it's my family, we'll serve the Lord. By golly, I'm going to go buy me a conversion van. Look, I can't get an Irish man. I ain't going to fit all them babies. Don't get a conversion van like, you know, like the people that be out doing a public service, jump out with the yellow jackets. I'm going to go buy a conversion van. All the kids going to have yellow jackets because it's too many to keep up with. I can't remember all their names. So everybody going to have on yellow jackets with, with Jesus loves me on there. And we're going to be a big old happy jolly family. I'm telling you, there's more men out there that would do it for my sisters. For my brothers that got five kids as well. You better be taking care of them five kids. Because any woman that'll take you in while you're not taking the care of them kids, that's this thing right in the head. And the same way she sees you not taking care of them kids, you better believe that's the reason. She sees you neglecting them kids as a provision for you to give her your unconditional, um, unhindered attention. She has attention issues, bro. She's allowing you to be with her. And you're not taking care of your kids. She not right, bro. But you not right neither. So y'all deserve each other. How it goes, how it go. I believe that anybody that don't take care of them kids don't deserve a good man or a good woman. You get cheated on. What goes around comes around. Now I know him. I know him. You're bouncing your husband, bouncing your kids, and you think it's gonna be all good. You're flying here, flying there. This stuff was all good just a week ago. Now it's all bad. You don't deserve a good woman, bro. You don't deserve a good man, sis. You don't deserve it. You don't take care of your kids. Why do you think you deserve a good man or a good woman? You don't take care of your kids. Why? What makes you worthy? Your kid's not worthy of a good parent, so why are you worthy of good love? Mm. Take it. That's correction out of love and truth. Because I love you, I tell you the truth. If I didn't love you, I'll tell you a lie. I say, go kick it, have fun. Your kids be all right. That's a lie straight from the pits of hell. You don't take care of your kids. You don't deserve. You don't deserve a provision of a good man or a good woman in your life helping you when you don't help your kids. You don't deserve it. Let them cheat on you. Let them hurt your feelings. Let them use you. Let them really show you who you are. Because karma. No, I'm sorry. Bible. Corinthians 6 9, Galatians 6 9. Do not grow weary of doing good, for in due time you will reap a harvest if you do not quit. You're going to reap what you sow, both good and bad. If you don't treat your kids right, why should a man treat you right? Why should a woman treat you right? Why? Why? Why, Cletus? Why? Bite it, kick rocks. So we're gonna go back to that's that's something I'm passionate about and convicted about. Come a baby, and I ain't gonna get in on all that. I got family watching. We pray for the people. We pray for everybody. Pray for them, sweet Jesus. Pray for them. We love them. Pray for them. Back to being still and the application of being still. <sighs> being still is not not moving. 
Being still is studying your word. Being still is abiding in the Lord. Being still is being obedient. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Sis, close your legs, bro. Put the sausage in your pan. Stop sex is for marriage. That's one of the biggest things that hinders new Christians. And it's tough. And I'm not going to sit up there and jump down your throat and say, stop having sex before marriage, bro. But stop having sex before marriage. It's going to hinder your, your intimate relationship with Jesus. So people like this. Mm. God put it in my spirit a long time ago, and I'm still working on it so I can give it to people. Um, if you're with a young lady, you're trying to study her, right? It's brand new. You want to know her favorite color. You want to know her favorite food. You want to know her favorite place to go. You want to know her favorite candy. You want to know her favorite perfume. You want to know her favorite designer. You want to know her favorite... Per you want to know everything about this young lady or this young man, sisters, for brothers and brothers. You want to know everything about this person, right? You study what makes them mad. You study what makes them happy. You study what 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 makes them sad. You study. Oh my! You, you start. You start diagnosing. Like I think that you dealing with depression. I think that you dealing. You studying them, studying them, cause you're falling in love with them. Jesus works in the same way. That is the application. People say fall in love with Jesus. Fall in love with Jesus. Fall in love with Jesus. They just say fall in love with Jesus because they haven't. They haven't been gifted with the with the gift to teach. And I'm trying to dodge that I pause because I don't want to be a preacher. I don't want to be a pastor. I don't want to go in a pulpit and be responsible for a flock. I just don't want that. I just love talking about Jesus. I just love doing this. But let your will be done, not my will be done. They can't teach it. They can understand it. They can discern it, but they can't teach it. So they tell us. Fall in love with Jesus. They tell us be still. They tell us wait on the Lord. They tell us focus on God, but they don't tell us how to because they may not have been gifted with the ability to teach us that. And I'm here to tell you what focus on the God mean. Focus on God mean. I'm here to tell you what be still mean. I'm here to tell you what wait on the Lord mean. I'm here to tell you what fall in love with Jesus mean. And fall in love with Jesus means to study him just like you would study a new lover, a new relationship. That new love is amazing. But Jesus said, Faithful are the ones that believe and don't see because the disciples is like they said something I can't I can't remember and Jesus said because you see me you believe but great is the faith of those that believe and don't see the same way you believe in a young lady when you pursue her you you see her as your wife already you see her you see yourself making love to her like oh man she just don't know it yet she already wifey and you pursue her relentlessly I mean you just you. Oh, ladies, I'm going to tell. I'm about to tell, tell, tell. Give me some ginger ale. <clears throat> I'm about to tell on the brothers. Pay attention. We watch everything. Now, we're not goofy enough to remember everything, but we watch everything. Everything. So, when y'all walk down the street and we're pursuing you and we're just trying to get your attention, we notice how you're a little bit heavier on your right foot. And lighter on your left foot. So when you switch your booty jip to the right, shake to the left, we notice everything. We notice that when you wear yoga pants, that it may not come all the way over your hips. And how you keep pulling your jacket down because you might be a little bit insecure because you don't feel like you got enough back there. Or maybe you feel like you got too much back there and you pull your jacket up. We notice that. We notice that. A woman that pulls her jacket down, to me, not all men, is a woman that is covering she's modest yeah she got on yoga's pants but she's modest and she may be a little bit insecure about her little booty but it's a booty you know a girl who's proud of her big booty she pulling that jacket up letting everybody see and yeah rather be proud of that big butt but she letting everybody see that big butt now i don't want everybody to see my big butt cover that butt up brothers we watch everything we watch when you eat if you eat with your right hand you raise your fork to your mouth and you put the food in your mouth with the fork <laughs> If you take with your right hand and you take the fork and you kind of pop the food in your mouth before the food is fully off the fork, we notice everything, ladies. We notice everything. And if a brother is not in the spirit and he's in his natural, he's going to notice everything. He's going to study you. You're going to find extremely attractive that he studies you and he's studying you to destroy you. A natural man is studying you to destroy you. Brothers, sisters do the same thing. Study you to destroy you. 
She'll study your Facebook page. Oh, God, I would show you my inbox, but I'm a believing Christian man, and I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings nor expose nobody. They study these carnal, I'm sorry, not carnal, because I'm carnal. Everybody get horny. I get horny. Keep on horny. These natural people that say they love Jesus, but they're trying to get in them draws. They're trying to get a baby out you. They're trying to get a baby in you. They're trying to find a way to lock you down in any way but the spiritual way. They don't want God to bring you to them because they don't have the faith that God. They think God showed them. So you, you, they don't get you. They don't get you. They don't get you. But they're trying to get you naturally. They're trying to finesse you. Listen, Christians. Finessing is not of God. Finessing is what you have to use your own, the source of your own energy to sway somebody to be in with you. And it don't work like that. You judge a tree by its fruits. God told me I'm going to notice my wife by her spirit. See, when I see her, I'm, I will notice her by her spirit. So right in there, if I'm looking at her curves or her bust line or her beauty, I'm already messing up. He told me in February, he told me in February 2018, he said, Merle, marry your purpose, not your preference. Like maybe three, four months ago, he said, Merle, you're going to know your wife by her spirit. So guess what? I got to be in my word. I got a daughter and a son. I got to bring a woman home that's going to, that my daughter's going to say, <coughs> that's the type of woman I want to be when I grow up. Because I love my daddy. My daddy loves her. For my son, that's the type of woman I'm going to need to bring home. Because I see how much my daddy adores her, loves her, serves her. He puts her before us, and I'm okay with it because that's a man of God. It go God, wife, children. We are in order. I am in order. They're okay with me putting my wife before them because we're in order. My wife is helping me take care of my kids, and I'm not even her kids. That's if I wait and I do it the right way. Marry my purpose and not my preference. And the thing about that is God's going to put your preference inside of your purpose. You just can't tell it from the get-go. You can't tell what a cake is going to look like when it's flour and it's butter and it's egg and it's all separated. You can't tell what that cake going to taste like. You can't tell. You got to cultivate that cake. You got to mix everything in that cake. Put that sugar in it. You got to. Brothers, listen to me, brothers. I'm not talking about a cake. I'm talking about your wife. You have to be able to teach your wife the word. You got to cultivate it, brother. You got to be able to serve your wife even before she is your wife. You got to cultivate her, brother. You can't be making love to your wife before she is your wife because then you hurt your wife. You go to put that thing in the oven and you ain't put it together right. You make love to your wife. That that, that cake is going to go flat. It's going to go flat. It's going to go on the inside and that cake. It's going to be a cake. You can eat it. But that cake ain't going to be too much of a cake. You hear me? I'm hollering tonight. All glory to God. So being still. Man, I'm, I'm all over the place. <laughs> so being still is not exactly being still. Being still is studying the word, studying Jesus, falling in love with Jesus by studying him. Like just like you would study a lover. Um, you study everything about him. He's read all when you for new believers, even seasoned believers, when you get into a place where it's hard for you to open your Bible and you don't know what to read, always read the gospels. Gospels and Acts. Those, that's that that's where you, you you meet Jesus, you you study him, and then you see. Ooh, that's so good. Thank you, Jesus. You see what the people that walk with Jesus and people that met Jesus, like Paul, he didn't walk with Jesus, he met Jesus. You see that people that have encountered Jesus, how he changed their lives when they were obedient, when they allowed Jesus into their life as the center of life, not the head, the center, the heart. Jesus wants your heart. He wants to come into that. He wants you to let him into your heart. And we got to constantly surrender our hearts. The Bible says our hearts are poisonous, deceitful. That's why we have to do better instead of know better. Instead, we have to we have to do better than feel. We go by what we feel. We be messed up. A lot of people that we got feelings for that are just they're not good people. Just it just is what it is. Book Saul. It's the guy I saw in First Samuel that could tell you about good people. Or, I'm sorry, evil people. Bad people that do good things, but don't make them good. It's still evil. And it is what it is. It's a hard teaching because there's some people that we really love, but we know in our heart of hearts that they're not good people. They're evil. They do good things. They can say good things. They could probably even make good love to you, but that don't make them good people. 
you know what I mean. You feel it. You may not be able to understand it or verbalize it, but you know what I mean. Um, so, being still, man, I've been all over the place. I definitely can't be a preacher. I'll be on the pulpit going left to right, back and forth, north to south. I'll be all over the place. You have to study your Bible. Find out who Jesus is. Find out what Jesus wants. Find out what Jesus desires is. Find out exactly what Jesus means to you. How you identify with Jesus. Just like you would do a lover. And then once you have found that out. You know. And you go to you go to small groups. You go to Bible studies. You go to church. Just finding out who Jesus is. Just, just studying them. And once it clicks. And it will click. Study to find out self approved. Once you learn how to pray. It says the, 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 the effective verb in prayer of a righteous man develops much. You ask God for the wisdom of everything that you learn. And he's going to grant it to you. Once you have really fallen in love with Jesus and learn who he is and learn what he means to you. You take that knowledge and you go teach others. That's the other part of being still. Kingdom work. When Jesus was missing, his parents went looking for him, and they found him in the temple. And they said, Jesus, we was looking for him. He said, you did not know that I was about my father's business? Did you not know? And, and on the other side of that, now I don't even really get into that, but look at I'm about my father's business. What are you doing? Why are you looking for me? Go tell somebody about God. I'm in here. I'm about my father's business. I'm in here studying, ministering, sharpening the arm with the elders, 12-year-old boy. Why, why are you looking for me? I'm about my father's business. <coughs> Be still. Learn about Jesus and be about your father's business, kingdom work. God invests in people. And I'm going to say this and I'm going to cut this off because I know it's been running for a minute. Bill Gates. You know Bill Gates loves money. You know Bill Gates. If you Bill Gates go and invest a billion dollars into something, you're going to say, man, that's probably a worthy investment. And you're going to go and invest in what Bill Gates invests in because you know Bill Gates knows money. He invests in money. Well, guess what? God took his priceless most expensive gift which is jesus christ and he invested in the people so if you value what bill gates value you're going to go invest your money when he invests money in because you want money right bill gates values money well god values people he sent jesus christ jesus christ his one and only son to die for what he loves his investment which is people so you need to invest in people you need to tell people about jesus christ now it ain't always book, chapter, verse talking to people. It's just sometimes just coming around, being around. Family, like, hey, how you doing? Love y'all. And then they're like, oh, man, there's something different about you. What's going on? Oh, man. Here come your part to witness. Oh, man. Here come your part to your kingdom work. Man, I ain't going to lie to you, man. It might sound crazy, man, but Jesus Christ. I asked him into my life and many things. It ain't always get better, but, man, it was just different. And, and when it didn't look good, you know, I just stayed with the Lord. I was obedient. And, man, things are just... Things are just turning around in my life. And, you know, it's not like before, like to where you just get a big check and you good for a month or two and then you back down bad. Like, nah, when Jesus came into my life, man, things changed. So Sometimes it got worse, but then when it got better and then stuff started messing up, I was able to see things differently to where even if it got bad, Jesus was there. And it wasn't no down bad no more. And when you don't have Jesus, you suffer losses. When you do have Jesus, everything is a lesson. So... You don't have to lose anymore. And I just, this is what I learned. And because you're just telling them your testimony, Revelation 12, 11 says, we defeat the enemy by the blood of the lamb, which is Jesus Christ and the word of our testimony. You ain't sitting up there giving a book, chapter, verse. You're not sitting up there talking about some Ephesians say this and Corinthians say that. And No. All you're doing them is saying, man, God's been good to me. That's it. And just telling them how. Like, man, I had 98 cent Thanksgiving. And I had three turkey dinners. I wound up giving two away with 98 cents in my bank account. Nothing but the manifestation of God in my life. That's what witnessing is. That's what telling people about the gospel is. And when people come to you, there's going to be some people who, who are going to want to know God. And some people who are just want to know, hey, who's Jesus? Who's God? You know, some people going to say, hey, I, I was reading this. Like Peter and the Ethiopian. Peter, uh, not Peter, Philip and the Ethiopian. Philip saw the Ethiopian and he said, hey, what are you reading? You want to know about what you're reading? Next thing you know, the Ethiopian getting saved and getting baptized. You know what I'm saying? You meet people that they need, like Jesus at the well. You know what I'm saying? I'm throwing book chapter first at you. But, you know, you meet people that they need, meaning 
if you see somebody who's crying and their mother just died, they don't want to hear about no, no freaking Jesus saying, let the dead go bury the dead. Nah, you close their spirit. But what you can tell them is like, man, I'm sorry for your loss. Um, you know, I lost somebody as well, man. And um, I really just felt hopeless and I felt painful and I felt hurt. And um, not to be cliche, man, but I was just crying out and I was just asking God, you know, how do I, how do I, how do I get past this pain? You know, I lost, and they dead. And he was like, man, it's like Jesus to help you feel that pain. I said, like, you know, who is Jesus? You know, and you know the pain. You tell him, you know, the pain was still there when you heard the name of Jesus. It didn't subside immediately, but after you heard the name of Jesus, the pain it 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 started going away and then that's when they nose poke up like what well, they in pain i'm in pain what you mean the pain started going away tell me more like, yeah the pain started going away and you know the more i learn and focus on jesus i notice my pain leaving you tell that to somebody who's in pain you giving them hope you don't know if they're ready to kill themselves they want to go join their loved one that they just lost we live in cleveland bro drive bys dead bodies all the time suicides husband killing wives wives killing husbands people need hope you give people just a little bit of hope to let them know yes that pain is real you're in real pain but there's a cure to that pain they gonna be like i'm listening and you've got the cure in you and all you gotta do is tell them about them you don't save god saves jesus saves you just plant in water Acts says one plants while one water, about one plants while one water, but only God gives increase. All you do is plant and you water. That's kingdom work. That's part of being still. You're planting and you're watering. You're learning about Jesus. You're taking care of God's business. So imagine, so imagine, so being still. So let's take a husband whose wife is leaving him. And he's like, God, my wife is leaving me. What do I do? And it sounds crazy, but God says, be still and wait on the Lord. Stay to find out, self-approved. What does this mean, Lord? And he sends you a brother. And that brother says, look here. My wife, same thing. Two kids. No, I separated. I wasn't a good husband. She gone. Two weeks, she got a boyfriend after 20 years. And I fell apart. I was demolished. And I wanted to kill myself. I hate. I wanted to kill her and her boyfriend. I asked God if he was real. And all that physical pain that you feel in God took it away. And I knew he was real. I knew he was real. And I've been chasing after God. God taught me about Jesus. Jesus taught me about God. And I love, fell in love with Jesus. And then my heart wanted what Jesus wanted. And Jesus said, I want you. But I want more of you. I want your friends. I want your family. I want your children. Tell them about me. Tell them what I did for you. Tell them, Merle. Tell them, Merle. And then I want you to go tell that man that took your wife away from you. I want you to go tell him about me, too. I, I, I got a better relationship with him. The man that caused my divorce to my ex. Being 100. Being 100. Like, what's up, big guy? <laughs> like, that, like, what's up, big guy? Look at her. Like, but I'll be playing, you know what I mean? We like, stinky eye. You know what I mean? For real. God to do it. Won't he do it? Won't he will? He do it. Okay? And that's it. That's, 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 your, that's being still. Learn about Jesus. Fall in love with Jesus. Want Jesus. Want, want what Jesus want. Put that in your heart. Jesus want people. He'll send you after your enemies. People that say they hate you. Because hate is only jealous and love mixed together. And all they want to know is, why aren't you dead? Why aren't you down? Why aren't your husband left you, sis? Why ain't you killed yourself? Why are you still walking on two feet? Why? And you tell her, Jesus. You tell him, Jesus. You tell them, Jesus. You plan. Just tell them, Jesus.
And if they want to know why, you water. Jesus did this, did that, did this, did that manifestation, testimonial, and you give them some word if you got it. That's watering. We renew our minds with the washing of water for the word, of the word. Planting is, hey, Jesus loves you. God bless you. Have a good day. Watering is, let me tell you why God bless you. Let me tell you, you know, why you woke up this morning. Let me tell you the call that is on your life. Let me tell you about Jesus Christ. Let me tell you what he did. Let me tell you the reason for the season. Let me tell you. I said I was going to close that off. And hey, I'm going to close it off right there. That's what be still is. Study Jesus. Fall in love with Jesus. Get in your word. And then go out there and tell people about Jesus. Meet them at their need. It ain't always about the Bible. Just have a conversation with them. The word is in you. So the word is going to shine through. You don't got to say book, chapter, verse to them. You just, well, look here. Let him go. He don't want, he don't want what's good for you, sis. You know, God is saying you're a good husband. Just let that man go. You know, God loves you. He didn't call you to be in a relationship with a man that keep cheating on you. You know, why you want to... I understand he got good money, sis. I understand he probably made good love, but is it really worth what you're going through? You ain't gave her a big chapter of verse. You just gave her truth, and truth is the gospel. There's the right thing to do, and there's the righteous thing to do, and I'm not going to get into that because that is a... That's about two lies. The right thing to do and the right thing. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to leave it right there. Put a pen in that. All right? So I love y'all. I check with y'all. You watch this. Be still. Study. Learn about Jesus. Application. Go do kingdom work. Go tell people about Jesus. Pray for people. Pray with people. Go visit family. Just go let them see you doing better and let them wonder why and just tell them how good Jesus has been. And as you talk to people about Jesus, you'll start to get joy. Even in your pain, your husband just walked out. Go do your kingdom work. Fall in love with Jesus, and you'll have joy. Like, how am I able to laugh? My husband just walked out with that 20-year-old woman. How am I able to laugh and my wife is with this man? Because Jesus, he's that good. He'll give you joy in your storm. Does it hurt? Yes. But my grace, God's grace is sufficient. Leave you right there. Put a pen in that. Love y'all. God bless y'all. Ooh, we've been on there for a minute. Love y'all. God bless y'all. Be still. Wait on the Lord. Apply that thing to your life. Peace.